Hi, my name is Chuck Geither with the Boyle County Public Library, and today I'll be showing you one way to make a DIY hummingbird feeder. This video is set to release in conjunction with the take-home kits of the same name, available at the library while supplies last. Due to the malfunction of one of our tools in the preparation of these kits, some changes had to be made to the PVC parts. In the library's take-home kits, you'll find two holes at the bottom of your feeder, as well as a threaded adapter piece. These are not included in the demonstration, so I'll be showing you how to deal with them here. To assemble your feeder after painting, slip the non-threaded end of your adapter onto the end of your pipe that does not have holes. Next, screw the threaded cap onto it. This forms the top of your feeder. When you add the slip cap to the bottom of your feeder, it should completely cover the large holes, while leaving the small feeding hole uncovered. If it doesn't, or your feeder doesn't end up as watertight as you'd like, you can fill the holes with resin, glue, some other kind of material, or even cover them with tape. You can also apply a small bit of glue to the pipe before sliding the slip cap or the adapter onto it to tighten their hold. To get started, you're going to need the main shaft of your feeder. This is an 8 inch length of 3 quarter inch PVC. Next you'll need paint. The kits include acrylic paint, but I had spray paint available instead. I'm going to be using red on the biggest piece. For the end caps of the pipe and feeder, I'll be using green. Later on, I'll be demonstrating a layering technique that can allow you to add stripes with spray paint with a third color, if you wish. You'll also need something to hold the pieces while you paint them. I can't stress enough that your feeders can be painted however you want. You can use as much or as little color as you deem fit in any combination. There's no wrong way to do it. If you're using spray paint like me, start by shaking your can well to mix all the components together. Here you can take a lesson from my mistake. Before painting, you will want to cover the threads of your pipe with tape. I didn't do this, and my cap is much harder to take off with two layers of paint in the threads. Then just hold the can four to six inches away from the surface of the piece and spray. If you spray at the same spot for too long, the paint can start to drip and run. If you want to avoid this, sweep your can in broad, quick strokes while you're spraying. With acrylic paint, this step might take a little longer, but will end up being less messy and more precise. Simply apply the colors you want with a brush until you've covered all the white plastic, unless you want to leave some behind. Make sure to rinse the brush before changing colors and let layers dry before going over them with any additional coats. Whatever paint you're using, the goal is to start off with an even and complete coat of your base color or colors. Then give it time to dry. Depending on temperature, humidity, and type of paint, this can take minutes, hours, or even overnight. If you're using acrylic paint and a brush, decorating your feeder after the first coat is down will be a breeze. All you have to do is brush on any kinds of shapes, patterns, swirls, or pictures that strike your fancy. Your imagination's the limit. Creating a design with spray paint on such a limited surface area is a bit different. There are some incredible spray paint artists out there, but I'm not one of them. Instead, I opted to put some painter's tape over my first coat in random zigzagging lines. When we put the second pink coat on this feeder, the tape will block off certain spots, preserving the red of the first coat when the tape is finally removed. This tape method works just as well with hand brushing as spray paint. Once the tape's on there, repeat the process of painting. Quick, broad strokes to get a light, even coat. Here we have another mistake that I made and a chance to pass on what I've learned to you. My second coat had trouble sticking, as you might see. This is because I didn't allow quite enough time for my first coat to dry. Be patient. If your first coat is even a little bit tacky or sticky, it isn't ready.
Once your second coat is dry, carefully peel off the layers of tape to reveal the lines of color beneath. In the final stages of constructing your hummingbird feeder, you'll need some supplies. A strong adhesive such as hot glue, craft wire, we're using 18 gauge copper wire today, some wire cutters, beads that fit the wire just to make it pretty, and other decorations as desired. We have laminated cardstock flowers which we'll be placing over the feeding hole to approximate a hummingbird's natural food source. Before we start using those, we need to finish assembling the feeder itself. One end cap will go on each end of the main shaft. The slip-on cap will be the bottom and it should rest just below the feeding hole. True to their name, the slip caps simply slip on. Place them on the end and press them firmly against a hard surface. The threaded cap screws onto the top. These caps are very tight. Be careful not to over tighten them or you may need tools to open it again. Make sure that you have just one hole above the bottom slip cap. When it's all constructed, it should look something like this. Now we have to make a way to hang it, and we'll do so with the copper wire. There are dozens of ways you could make a hook or loop from which to hang your feeder. Don't be afraid to make it up as you go, but be careful. Sharp bends are hard to remove from wire if you need to back it off and try again. Once you've devised how to wrap your wire, we can revisit our other decorations. Depending on how you are using your wire, you may need to slide your beads on now instead of later. I'm going to take my loop of wire and place my feeder at its midpoint. Then twist both sides to tighten that midpoint around the neck of the feeder just below the cap. Once the sides are twisted up, it should be a simple matter to unite them above it in a loop. I encourage you to invent your own way as I've seen some truly creative and beautiful designs made from the wire, but my method turned out pretty well, so I'll help you follow along with that as well. Here I have the shaft laying at the midway point of my loop of wire. I have two beads on each side of the divide now because I want two on each side in the finished product. I do my best to flatten it out and make sure there's an equal amount of wire on each side of the pipe. Starting with the open side, I pinch the wire together, move the beads out of the way, and twist it around itself in a tight, even manner, being careful to hold the other side and not let it get pulled. The twisting motion is similar to that of a bread tie. I make almost three twists before I let one bead come down. Pinch the wire around it and keep twisting. After just two more twists, I bring in the other bead and repeat that same pinch and twist. Now I repeat the whole process on the other side. 
pinching it closed around the tube, twisting three times, bringing one bead in and pinching around it, then twisting twice more before adding the second bead and twisting it up too. You can see here that the two sides end up looking approximately the same. This will give your final product a roughly symmetrical looking appearance. Next, I twisted up the excess on both sides until one had two small bits of wire on the end, and the other had a small loop. You'll need this loop for the next part, so don't twist it up all the way. To finish, I simply fed the ends from one side through the loop on the other, and wrapped them around tightly, squeezing them back into the twisted wire underneath. This should leave you with one solid loop of twisted wire, with which you can hang your feeder. Now we're on to our final step, which will be to attach the fake flower directly over the feeding hole. The flowers included with our kits have a hole pre-punched in them. If yours doesn't, you'll need to make one. For this, you can use a drill, scissors, an X-Acto knife, or whatever you have available. Similarly, the feeders included in our take-home kits have a pre-drilled feeding hole somewhere near the bottom of the feeding shaft. These are important to the next steps. You'll also need hot glue or another tough adhesive. Place two dabs of glue on your feeder, one slightly above and one slightly below the feeding hole. Be very careful that no glue obstructs this hole. Line up the hole of your flower with the small feeding hole and press it carefully but firmly onto the hot glue. Work quickly as adhesives like this like to dry fast. Once your glue dries and you're satisfied with the placement, your feeder is finished. All that remains is to fill and hang it. When it comes to filling our bird feeder, you want to do so with simple syrup. This is a mixture of sugar and water, and it's very easy to make. Start by placing a small saucepan on a stovetop burner. Turn the burner to its lowest setting. Warming the water helps to dissolve the sugar completely, but we do not want anything boiling. Next, add in a mixture of one part white refined sugar to four parts water. Now just stir everything until it's all completely dissolved. Never add dye to hummingbird feed, especially red dye. It's toxic to the hummingbirds. Now let your mixture cool. Once your mixture is cooled, pour it gently into your feeder while holding one finger over the feeding hole. It helps to have a funnel for this. Screw the cap back on, and you can take your finger off the feeding hole. The water tension combined with the vacuum seal should hold the water inside with a few drips. 
Over time, the syrup will slowly drain out or be consumed by visiting birds. When it does, just whip up a bit more syrup and rehang it. Enjoy the view!